Hello, welcome all to today's 24 hour readathon. My kids are going to their dads for a couple of days, so I thought this is a perfect time to try it out. I don't think it's something I probably would do a lot because 24 hours of reading is a very, very, very much, much time. So I'm going to do the timer method where I'll just tally up 24 hours as I go because there is no way I am going to stay awake for 24 hours. This is not going to happen. I'm not going to put which books I think I'm going to read because I'm just going to totally mood read this bitch. I'm going to pick up whatever I feel like because I think by hour 15 I'm probably going to be a little tired of reading so it will definitely have to be a book that's very much caught my interest for me to continue to push through. But I know the first book that I'm going to read and that is The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. I'm going to sort of switch between my e-reader and books because sometimes books after a while like my wrists hurt from holding them because I'm a delicate delicate flower. I'm just gonna like switch between the two and just like I said pick up whatever floats my boat. So without much further ado let's get this readathon started. Okay, so I just finished The High Mountain Court. I think, I think I'm going to give it three and a half. Um, it's pretty stock standard fantasy. There's a lot of similarities to, you know, the Akatar series. They've got fae and witches and there's different classes of witches. You've got red witches, which are the most like coveted and, and they were like slaughtered by the current king. So there's a lot of like political machinations of one court slaughtering another and trying to take over and which courts support the new regime, which courts don't. There's also humans in this world. Um, there's also witch hunters. It's pretty fun. Um, there were some issues. There were a lot of times when the book was like congratulating itself, like telling you how great <laughs> everything is. For instance, uh, when Remy meets Hale, she comments that, you know, he's got women as his warriors. And he's like, I've got a lot more women warriors in my league than this. Um, this is just a few of them and it's sort of like look at me look how good I am I, I let women fight in my gang and then when she's like talking about his warriors and companions she's like they're so funny aren't they great I would love to be friends with them and it's sort of like it was like telling you like like these people these people are cool they're funny they're you know what I mean without actually showing them being funny you know it was just a lot of like being told like sort of how to think about stuff like like this person isn't this cool that I've done and their relationship I don't know there was some cringy moments it was a bit insta lovey but then you find there's something else happens at the end and you sort of like understand why and i i called the twist as soon as this one thing happened i'm like okay i know where this is going typical for fake sort of stories um and it's fine like the sex scenes were fine like the smart was good not great not bad it was good it's like that medium like yeah okay that's fine yeah i i enjoyed it but then there were also parts where I sort of didn't understand Remy's choices for certain things, knowing sort of her full extent. And there's some stuff that happened at the end, which was very frustrating. So everything happens right at the end of the book. And these other characters come into play and you sort of don't get to know them and this stuff happens. And I'm like, what was the point of that? What was the point of that? Uh, it just felt a bit shitty, <laughs> to be honest. Um, with the ending, with, with what happened, I felt like it could have been avoided if they just actioned their plan sooner. Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you waiting? <laughs> like, let's let's uh, have a few extra people die for shits and giggles. It was a bit anticlimactic, I guess. It was entertaining. It was very easy to read. It's not like fantastic, but you know, with, with fantasy, as long as I'm just having fun and it's easy to read and... I'll like it, you know what I mean? Like we've all got the genres that we have like a low expectation for and we'll accept like less than, like it's sort of like our junk food. We'll, you know, we'll have a snack every now and again. So this was that for me, but like I said, it was very reminiscent of like every other book that's come before it. Nothing new, nothing amazing, but you know, it was fine. So I did finish that book in just under two hours. So I'm about two hours into this. And I think the next book I'm going to read is this poetry book called Revenants by Adam Aitken, just as like a refresher, a palate cleanser. I like to read nonfiction in between fiction because it sort of just resets. Otherwise, too many stories at once is a bit overwhelming for me. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna give this a read and I'm gonna go have a sweet snack because I am hungry.
so I just finished Revenants. Um, yeah, it's not for me, like I said, with, with poetry. I either love it or I don't. So this one was about the author whose mother was from Bangkok, father was from Australia. Um, the settings, the countries that they're sort of set in are Asia, Australia, Hawaii, and France. And the poems are mostly about the inherited experiences of colonialism. That being said, my favourite poem was Village Cat. The moonlight dazzles the kinky-tailed cat, the secret agent able to calm herself by marking her evening with zen-like stealth. On guard, on her pitch, aware, I assume, but not concerned with free will or the Second Amendment, right to bear arms. And probably not thinking of escape. Cats are not sentimental, but happy if we are. She does not judge me as foreign, just useless. She wins a staring competition every time. Eyes that scoped me from my terrace, both informants from our side of the underworld. I want to think she's telling me something. If I could sell her information that mattered, I would. She comes to me in a dream on four legs. Her boundaries have become my own. So yeah, <laughs> um, that was my favourite. A poem about a cat, who would have thought? But um, yeah, that was Revenants. So I finished that and I'm going to start something else. I think I might pick one from my Kindle. Sorry. So I've decided that I'm going to go back to my Kindle and the next book that I'm reading is Better Than The Movies, which is a romance. Let's see how I go. I don't know if you can see that. That's a tear making its way down. I think I got one starting here too. <sighs> Straight into it. It's the dead mum. It's the dead mum thing. And it's got me. I'm just so sad because I just think, what if this was my teenage daughter and I wasn't there? to go through all these things with her, I'm going to cry. It's, <laughs> I wasn't expecting it. Look, besides that, it's I didn't realise it was a teenage movie. I'm, I've got to wipe my face because I'm, I'm legit crying. I probably wouldn't have read it if it was, but so far it's very cute. It's very sweet. I can already sort of predict what's going to happen if it follows the... Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are you doing there? Um, if it predicts, if it follows the the tropes like they talk about um each chapter starts with like a movie quote from a movie and yeah the main protagonist is very into romance movies it's something she used to do with her mum um trying not to tear up about that again it's it's entertaining so we'll see how this goes but yeah man that the dead mum thing it's got me i just finished it <laughs> so it was good it was so wholesome so it is YA but because it's wholesome it was fine I was just grinning from ear to ear it's so sweet it's so predictable but you know look I was a teenager when 10 things I hate about you came out and she's all that and all of those classic teen rom-com movies and I saw them a thousand times 10 things I hate about you was my favorite so it, this book just felt like that and it was a blast for the past it was a, like a blast from my past for me. It just brought up all of those feelings of being, you know, a 16-year-old with your girlfriends, imagining what love could be like. I just enjoyed it. It was it was great. It made me cry. All of the mum stuff really just, you know, hit me. And it made me smile at the cuteness. And look, I will say the only things that annoyed me was that the stepmom sounded like an adult who's trying to talk like a teenager and I don't know if they did that on purpose if she was trying to just relate to Libby more by talking like Libby but that was a bit odd around Libby sort of made her feel bad for her fashion choices they pretty much said like they called her sense of style grandma dresses and as someone who has a lot of grandma clothing like I took that personally and it wasn't just the boys telling her like those clothes aren't sexy or whatever but it was her friend and her family that kept telling her about how much better she looked when she dressed in a more modern way and that yeah just really upset me I think that wasn't really cool there was one person at the end who said that they looked best when they wore what they loved but I'm just like but yeah I don't know I just I just felt like that sucked like why do they have to make fun of her quirky dated dresses and some Thing someone said once was quite mean because they likened it to her just wanting to be like her dead mum and I'm like so what if she does so what if that's the reason that she dresses in these clothes because it makes her feel closer to her mum what business is it of yours just shut the fuck up if you've got nothing nice to say don't say anything at all and I'm just so tired of like people giving their unsolicited opinions about the way you dress in a negative manner by all means compliment but don't also give backhanded compliments like oh that looks so much better than what you used to wear. Ooh, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. 
So yeah, that was the only negatives that I had about the book. Otherwise, like I said, it's a feel good book. It had me smiling and it's, you know, it's so cute to be reminded of that like innocent first love when you're a teenager and all you do is talk to your girlfriends and dream about like who the person you love will be and what it'll be like. And you have all of these naive fantasies, but like, look, if you're going to have a first love, um, Libby's first love, that's a great one. Yeah. So <laughs> not everyone is as lucky with uh, the people that they choose for their first loves, but you know, I'm glad it worked out for Libby, but it was adorbs and I really enjoyed it. I would give it, I'm going to give it 4.25 and that's high for a YA romance book. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. God bless them. Hello. This is me and my cat Nova. I'm just totally <laughs> infringing on her piece. So the next book I'm going to read is Feng Shui. I think I have read for about four hours now, if I recall the last time I looked at the timer. So I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm still okay. I am on my, I think this is the fourth book. So I'm, to be honest, if I was choosing, I wouldn't be reading anymore. I'd be like, I'm done for the day. But this is the 24 hours. I think I might only do it once. I'm going to just give it my all and uh, enjoy it while I'm doing it. But yes, this is the next one I'm reading because once again, I want a little palate cleanser and I'm really fascinated by feng shui. So time to learn. Hello, hopefully the aircon's not too loud. I have to have it on because it's 40 degrees today. So I just finished Feng Shui by Sky Alexander. It is very basic, but that's just all I wanted. I just wanted a whole bunch of like things that I could do today to improve the chi in my house. Um, and that's going to be starting with the front door. <laughs> I have severely lacked keeping that area neat and tidy. I need to change the front door. It's literally broken. Um, I've always wanted a red front door too, so I think I'm going to go and get myself a red front door and I'm going to get myself some statues and I'm going to clear it all out so that the chi can easily come into my home or help and also keeping my stove spotless. I'm going to admit that I don't do that every day. Some days I can't be bother cleaning the stove after dinner and I let it go until the next day and that's bad for wealth. <laughs> so. It just, yeah, it's very motivating. I find feng shui very motivating. And for me, it rings true. Like whenever, in the past when I did it, when I feng shui in my house, I felt so much better energy flow. It really changed the energy in my house. And I believe, like I believe in it. So it depends on you. Obviously some people think it's too woo-woo, but I do not. I think now I'm going to go and clean my front door. And I think I'm going to listen to an audiobook so I can keep going. So I'm going to listen to Waking Romeo, which I think is like sci-fi, dystopian. I'm really trying to just hit all the genres today to keep this fresh and exciting. I think if I just read like all oh, fantasy, I would hate it by the end. But I'm excited to get outside in the sweltering heat and um, get some fresh tea into my house. Okay, so cleaned up my front door. Hey, Sylvie. And now I'm going to read The Branded by Joe Riccone. It's quite hefty. How many pages is this? 400 page book. Hey, <laughs> so Jump. So it's a 400 page book. Um, we'll see how I go. I, tr I was trying to avoid really big ones because I, I feel sort of like a sense of accomplishment whenever I finish a book and I thought that would keep me going. But it's still pretty early on in the day. So I thought, why not? It's from the library, I gotta read it. So I'm gonna read that. And I'm gonna use this Oracle card as a bookmark today because I'm feeling it. So yeah, on to the next book. Okay, so I just finished the branded. It, it was slow to start. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't sure I was going to continue, but then I got invested. Oh my god, it was so good. I love Nara. I love her sister Osha. I love Nixon. I'm obsessed. I'm <laughs> obsessed. So, yeah. Uh, what is it about? There's like, there's the branded. So these, these are people that have like tattoos on them from birth, and then the pures, which have nothing. 
and this sort of a citadel where all the pure live and all of like the old families and all the branded are on the outside like in poverty i can't talk much more about that without spoiling it but yeah loved it loved it loved it loved it it continues on so obviously it's not a standalone um i'm probably going to give it 4.75 it's almost five stars but like i said the beginning i was like oh, i don't know if i'm going to get into it what's this about but then shit just goes down it kicks off and it's like what's happening what's going on who's to be trusted who's not to be trusted there are relationships in it i really like nara's love interest i think they've got a great dynamic there's complications of course there's complications we'll see how it go ocean her love interest cute don't know really a lot about her partner yet yeah really unexpected i just really enjoyed the story and i enjoyed the characters so uh, there's so many questions i have so many questions who's who what are they what's going to happen there's a whole plot of two like a prophesized one and so far it's sort of is it i can't even talk about it. i'll spoil it but yeah this this was great um i'm not sure how many hours i've done because it's on my phone and i'm on my phone right now but yeah i'm gonna go choose another book and when i come back i'll let you know how many hours i have done okay so i am just over six and a half hours in and i'm going to have to take a break because it's time to make dinner and hang out with my partner I'm going to read in bed, so I'm going to read an ebook, and I'm going to read How to Kill Your Family. So that will be the next one, and I'll probably read that until it's finished. And then um, I'll update you before I go to sleep, and then I'll restart the timer tomorrow. So I started to read Kokoro, An Intimate Portrait of Japanese in a Life, or Kokoro. I don't know how to say it, by Lafcadio Hearn. I read the introduction, which tells you all about Hearn. I think that was like 20 pages. And then I read 20 pages of Hearn's actual writing about Japan. It's just not for me. I don't like the writing and I find it really dense. Hearn wrote this in 1894. <laughs> I think that's the issue. I'm not a big fan of the classics. My favorite classic is Oscar Wilde's Picture of Dorian Gray. So unfortunately, this isn't for me and I'm going to be DNFing it and going on to something else. So I just finished How to Kill Your Family, and it's about this girl who's the illegitimate child of this incredibly rich married man. Her and her mother um, end up poor and destitute. Her mother dies when she's young, and she decides to get her vengeance by killing her father and his entire family. So at first I'm like, all right, that's fine. The main character is completely unhinged and very unlikable, but I thought, I'm gonna go along for the ride. And it was all fine until, now this is a bit spoilery, so if you don't want to listen to this, skip to the, the next book. It was fine until we get to Andrew. Andrew was a good person. And I thought, well, surely she's not going to kill him. Why should he have to pay for the sins of his uncle? He was estranged from the family because he realized these people are shitty people and I don't want any part of it. And he was basically just trying to help the world. But no, she kills him anyway. And at this point, I'm just like, not cool, bro. Like, so not cool. He did not deserve to die. And you're, you're an absolute shit of a person. <laughs> what an absolute psychopath. Like, she's just a straight up murderer with no, nothing. Like, she doesn't care. But then, but then she spares someone else. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So Andrew has to die, but... This other person gets to live and it made no fucking sense. And I just kept reading with the book thinking maybe, maybe it'll be okay. But no, things just get real weird. I got totally bored by her and her nonsense. And I was hoping someone would like just kill her to be honest. At the end, at the end of the day, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on your side at all. I didn't think I was going to be, but yeah. When she killed Andrew, it just really pissed me off. It really pissed me off. Because like I said, if she didn't if she didn't show mercy to anyone, I'd be like, okay, fine. But then she shows mercy to someone else who doesn't deserve it as much as Andrew did. I think I'm going to give that book like 1.75 stars. I don't know why people like it. The writing wasn't amazing. The characters were awful. The story idea was interesting, but just the way it was executed just wasn't for me. And that whole twist at the end with the person writing her the letters. I'm just like, oh, the letters were so boring. They were so boring to read. 
I just, and the person kept saying, like, I'm rambling. Yes, you are, bitch. You are rambling. Get to the point. Um, and then it just ends like that without, like, just no, I just wish I could get my time back. That was a waste. And I'm finishing my night on that and it sucks. I might start reading something else, but it's late. I've done, I think, nine hours at this point. Um, so I think I'm just going to call it a night and start off in the morning again. But yeah, that's, <laughs> this sucks leaving. Okay, so so my thoughts on this so far is the pros are it's great to just have uninterrupted reading time and just I'm knocking all these books off my TBR list. So that feels great to like action them off. But when you read a good book, you don't get to sit with it and like bask in the feels of a good book. And I love to go to sleep like a night after reading a good book and still being in that world. You don't get that because you're on to the next thing, on to the next thing. So I loved the one I read before this. I've already forgotten what it's called. <laughs> That's how, like, how, yeah, there's too many stories in my head. But I am, um, The Branded, The Branded, that's what it was. I love that one. And I would have loved to have let that be the book that I go to sleep with. But no, now I'm stuck with How Not to Kill Your Family. And it sucks. It makes me so angry. So I definitely already know this is not something I'm going to do again. Because it just, it does take the joy, like, finding good books away. You don't get to, you know, revel in that that yumminess and yeah the good news is like you read a bad book you just onto the next but unfortunately I'm going to sleep there is no way I'm staying up to read another book we'll see how we go to I'm hoping to finish this um 24 hour readathon off tomorrow to just knock out the last what is it like 15 hours <laughs> I know I'm probably not going to I'm probably not going to but I'm going to try I'm going to try <laughs> so I'm going to bid everyone a good night and I'll see you in the morning Good morning. So I just read Prince of Seduction, which is a prequel. In the first book, you have Keelin, a human who witnesses her sister get killed by the Gankana, and that's a fey creature who can kill one with a kiss, and she decides to get her revenge. So in this book, it's from Teague's point of view. Teague is cursed to not be able to say no to women. So if a woman wants to have sex with him, he has to have sex with her. And when they kiss, he kills them and takes their life. In the first book, you're like, okay, this is against his will. And it's sort of like you feel for him every time every time he has to go off with a woman, which is a lot. Sometimes he goes off with multiple women. And in this book, you find out that it's not so black and white. First of all, he can choose to kiss someone if he wants. And sometimes he kisses women straight away because he doesn't want to bang them. I'm like, okay. And then you find out that a lot of the times that he went off with those women to have sex with them, he actually really wanted to go and have sex with them. So <laughs> it wasn't all like against his will. He enjoyed a lot of it. And then a lot of the times when he didn't, he kissed the women and he killed them. So yeah, this book is no longer for me. Teague is just too much of a cad. And yeah, it's kind of ruined the first one because I'm like, oh, you're not who I thought you were. So I'm giving it 2.75 stars and I will not be continuing on with the series, but I have read for around just over 10 hours now. So I've got about 14 to go and I'm about to go and pick up another book. Hopefully this one will be a good one. Hey Sylvie. Okay, so I just finished reading art. So there are two poets, authors in this, and it's Charmaine Paper Talk Green and John Kinsella. Charmaine is a Yamaji poet and John Kinsella is a settler poet. Um, so it talks a lot about First Nation people and colonialism and country and that sort of thing. The way it's set up is that there's like a topic and then both of them write poems in regards to that topic and a lot of the topics i'll just show you some photos while i'm talking a lot of the topics are in response to shane pickett's artwork which is gorgeous i highly recommend you have a look at <laughs> the person's here little ring packages so some of the artwork is, is shown in here um so a lot of them are responses to his artwork um a lot of these poems are quite like substantial they almost read like essays it's like i'll show you how they're formatted so they do sort of feel like essay responses more than poetry it wasn't for me but I, it was still enjoyable to read and see their point of views as you can hear it is a super rainy day today isn't it oh hey baby um super rainy 
So the next book that I'm going to read, I'm almost at 11 hours now, is The Wicked Marquess because I just need something light and like a no-brainer. Hey, beautiful girl. And uh, yeah, I'll keep going. I don't know how do people do this? How do people do this? <laughs> repeatedly it boggles my mind but I'm going to finish it I am definitely going to finish it hopefully today if not obviously tomorrow but I'm really going to try and finish it today I just finished reading <laughs> I can't I'm so giddy that we can mark us it's a five for me it's a five from me oh my god I loved it I loved it so much it's the second in the sinful wallflowers series I gave the first one four stars but this one Jesus. Okay, so if you've got Marianne, love her. Love her. Definitely a book girlfriend, okay? Adorable. Just the best. But spunky, intelligent, witty, brave, courageous. Love it. And then you've got the Wicked Marquess Nicholas, who's known to be a rake, but really he's on a revenge plot, getting justice for a woman he loved that was raped by these dudes, these other very powerful counts and shit. So he's gone around meeting out justice. And she is being pushed into a really foul marriage with a disgusting, vile man. And all she can think to do is maybe if I can sort of get dishonored by saying that I may have kissed, you know, this Marquess who's known to participate in all kinds of debauchery, I can get out of this marriage. So she pretends that they've, you know, hooked up. He has been like watching her and he's very intrigued by her. And then when he sees her sort of, you know, <laughs> plotting this and causing these rumors he decides to engage with her and pays a visit to her room <laughs> it's like well you know if i'm if it's being said that i've kissed someone i like to at least have done what i'm being accused of um he doesn't know he doesn't know so oh i loved it i loved it in all the ways you can love it it's like my favorite kind of historical romance i just yes like to both of them book boyfriend book girlfriend i'll be in your throuple i loved it to bits and pieces and i'm so happy the way it played out it was just it was everything i needed today i i was like this close to like giving up on the 24 hour readathon because i had two duds in a row but and i'm going to take a break because i need to sit with this i need to marinate in the deliciousness of this book absolutely freaking loved it so oh and the sex scenes yes yes it's like well done I, I'm enjoying those. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I just love it. I love it when I find a couple that I'm just, I can ship for days. There's this one scene where she's covering her mouth with her hand and Nicholas comes up and he like kisses her knuckle and then he licks like in the V of her finger and then he bites her thumb. And I was just like, okay, because I have a thing for fingers. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like it. There were so many erotic scenes that did not include penetrative sex that were just like, oh, I love it. I love foreplay. So that scene, oh, so good. I will definitely be continuing on with this series, not in this book readathon, because I want to make sure I can really relish it and enjoy it. I don't think any other ones in the series can top it because these two characters were just it for me and she wore glasses and, I'm, and she had little quirks and she screams into her pillow and I'm like and he just finds everything about her fascinating and endearing and it's nice to have you know to have that um but yeah I just I loved it I loved it so much so once I've had my break and like time to sort of digest that book I'm going to be reading Sacred Sex The Magic and Path of the Divine Erotic because I need a non-fiction and I'm just going to keep riding that like erotic train and try and keep that energy going because I'm just want to bask in it a little longer. This book has a beautiful, absolutely beautiful rose petal finish. And I love when books have rose petal covers. It just, I just want to stroke it. So I think I've got 10 hours left of this challenge and this will be the next book that I read. Nova. Nova. It's Nova Moon's birthday today. 
Happy birthday, my love. Yeah, you're two. You're two today. I love you. Hello. So I just read Sacred Sex. Um, I've decided to give it 3.25 stars and I'll tell you why. So some good parts about this is they talk about boundaries. They talk about healing, maybe um, feelings of shame to do with sex, sexual abuse, that sort of thing, getting in touch with your own body and your own needs. So all of that's fantastic. They mentioned to, to get tested before entering into a sec sexual relationship with someone, which is great because for me personally, before I engage intimately with anyone, I'll be with issues in view, um, I've always asked my partners to get tested and I get tested and we um, show each other our results. And all the people that I've been with have said that I have been the only partner that they have had that has asked them to do that, which I was like, really? So obviously it's just not, I guess, a common thing people are doing, but I'm glad that she brought up like, you know, just go and get tested and talk to each other about it. And, and that way too, you're entering completely consensually into a relationship with each other and you're open and honest. So that was great. So this book is in red text. Um, for me, eh, it was okay, but it makes it a little more difficult to read. There are a lot of journal questions and prompts in this, which is fantastic. I loved her use of the tarot um, with her spreads on different concepts and different parts of your sacred sexuality and your sexuality and the erotic divine and everything. I thought that was fantastic. They then like say, which tarot card do you feel like you'd resonate with in terms of your sacred sexuality journey? I chose the star card for me personally. Um, but I love those editions in here. But this book is more about sex magic and more on the side of witchcraft. So there are um, sex magic rituals, I think, in almost every single chapter. And they talk heavily about witch history in terms of different founders and different practices and um, deities and goddesses and that to you. So this was more based on that. And for me personally, my sacred sexuality, I've leaned more towards, I guess, like Tantra and Kundalini and the divine masculine and divine feminine, not really witchcraft and sex magic. So because of that, that's why I gave it 3.25. The little bits in between that I thought were great, but this just wasn't for me because it was more heavily on sex magic. So I wish that had been a bit more apparent um, because even on the back, it was said, there is, they do mention sex magic, but then it's like Tantra, Kundalini, Kabbalah, um, tarot as an archetype, how to weave mindfulness in sex, rituals to activate self-love, guided journaling and affirmations, interviews with sex therapists. So I thought it was a bit more broad. It would be a bit more broad, but it really was mostly focused on the sex magic and less so on these other modalities and that that they mentioned on the back. Um, the journal, like I said, the journal prompts are great in here, but yeah, I just wished it was a bit more diverse and less focused, specialized on one facet that I just don't use I don't practice that that's why it just wasn't for me but I did enjoy like I said enjoy parts of it and now I'm going to be more on the lookout for some other books to do with sacred sexuality more from a divine perspective or from that kundalini perspective rather than sex magic Hey, so I have eight hours to go around about, just a bit over. The next book I'm going to read is The Poison Season by Maria Rutherford. So this is an Owl Crate edition. And let me just show you, let me just show you the prettiness. So these are the end covers. Like stunning, stunning. Okay, and then the book, the book. So that's the front cover. Isn't that bloody gorgeous? She looks gorge. Like love, just love that. And inside, those are the papers. But I'm very much looking forward to reading it. I'll see what it's like. Hopefully, it's not YA. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So that's one thing. I I'm not looking up the blurbs of these books before I'm reading them. I'm just going with it, <laughs> being surprised. But I'm very excited. I love pretty books. Why can't all books be like this? Why can't every every book have like great papers and great printed covers or embossed or foiled and beautiful? inside pages like oh i wish everything was as gorgeous and they could be forms of art
So I just finished The Poison Season by Mara Rutherford. So this is about an island where there is like a magical forest and these people live on the island and they have powers. But if their children at the age of 12 still have not gotten magic powers, they send the children in a boat across a poisoned lake to the rest of the world. Um, so they banish them. They cannot leave the island and those that have been banished cannot return. And uh, it's about a girl and one of the outsiders from the mainland ends up coming to the island and she finds him. Normally, if an outsider makes it to the island, the people of the island kill them. They either make them swim in the poison lake or they send them into the forest, the magical forest, which like eats people. So... I, I just hated the premise the whole time. I'm like, you're telling me that all these people on this little island are just sending their children away at 12 years of age by themselves just across the lake to start another life on their own. And none of them, none of them have ever tried to stop it or tried to go with their children. So I was like, that's just the dumbest shit ever. That is the dumbest shit ever. And then you find out that they only breed with each other. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, so everyone on the island is inbred. Like, very, very inbred. Because how many people can there possibly be on a small island surrounded by a lake? You know? So, yeah, and everyone's, like, married off to someone at 17 years of age to make babies to keep their population strong. And I'm like, do you not know about genetics? Do you not understand? <laughs> like, what constantly inbreeding is going to do to you? Um, so... Yeah, I just, I just found the whole premise dumb. So if I find the whole premise dumb, it doesn't like matter because I'm just like, this is stupid. This is stupid. Just leave. Just fucking leave, man. Um, and then the ending happened. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, I didn't like the other characters in the book. I especially didn't like the chick's family. I've already forgotten her name. No. And the main chick's name is Lilu. And I'm sorry, but Lilu is now multipass. Like, Crop and Dallas multipass. Like, you can't... You can't use the name Lilo, okay? It's taken. <laughs> it's done. Ugh, there's just too much too much nonsense happening. And I'm like, before before this point, someone, some parent would have been like, no, I'm not sending my baby across the fucking seas just because they turn 12 and don't have magic powers. I'm going with them. Like, if they're going to be shunned, I'm shunned too. And we're all going to leave. Mass exodus. But um, yeah, so I'm going to give it... Like the, and the writing's not like amazing, but it's not bad. The writing's not bad. It's just the story's shit. <laughs> the characters are shit. So what am I going to give it? Like 2.75. Because I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. Sorry. So I have six hours to go. Just a little over. I'm going to start reading, um, what's this book called? Lady of Darkness for bed. I'm not going to finish it. I'm not going to stay up for six hours. So I will be finishing this tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how we go. Good morning. So let me tell you how my night went. I started reading Lady of Darkness. I read more than half, so that's over 200 pages, my friends. And I finally said, nope, I cannot do it anymore. It's a very stock standard fantasy book where you've got fae and elves and a very special girl who's got all the powers and is all the strength and she's so sassy and strong. I love me some strong feminine women. Okay, don't get me wrong, eat them up. But in this way, the way they're written, it was just ridiculous. It's like, look at us, we're better than all the men, we're the most feared. And I just, oh, is there something about the writing style of this author? I just don't like it. So, and the woman had like two dudes on the go at the same time, which is just not my jam, not my thing. I didn't care about anything. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't care what happens to any of the people in this book. Um, not invested even though I've read over half of it. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. My bad. <laughs> so that was, that's gone. And then I picked up The Immortal City. Oh boy, not for me. This was the fastest DNF I have ever done in my entire life. Straight out the gate, get some Italian dude inviting a demon to take over his body and find a sacrifice. Who does he find? A pregnant lady. And they murder her in a very brutal, disgusting, grotesque manner. I will not tell you the details. But straight away, I'm like, I don't want that darkness around me. I'm going to have to smudge myself. I just won't want to partake in such heavy, dark material. Not here for it. Was not here for it. So that was, that was done. I was like, no, 
I want to have myself a good time, not a creepy dark ass time. So then I was like, you know what, fantasy choices haven't played out. Let's pick something up this morning. Let's start fresh. Let's get that energy going. This is my cat Sylvie and I love her. I love you. Um, so I picked up Crying in H Mart. So this was a memoir. I think it's an autobiography um, about a woman and her relationship with her mother. I'm going to start by saying, if you read this book, do not read it on an empty stomach. You will have a bad time. You need to make sure you're well fed or even better, be eating food. Even better than that, be eating some yummy Korean food because your mouth and your is going to be freaking drooling throughout this because it is just loaded. It is loaded with food porn. So the first part of the book, you, you, she talks about her relationship with her mother as a child and a teen. Straight up, I'm like, oh, it's toxic. It's one of those toxic ones. Okay. And then her mother gets cancer. And so then you go through that and then her mother dies and you sort of go with her grief. So for me, the reason that I gave this three stars, first of all, like memoirs are not really my thing, but I have read some great ones. Mean Baby, I'm glad my mom died. They were great. This one could have been edited way down, like so far down. There was just so much stuff in there that didn't really add much. And I just didn't, you know, the writing wasn't like amazing that I wanted just to keep reading more of the words. So it could have been edited way down. I didn't connect. I didn't cry. And I know I'm capable of crying for a mother that has cancer and dies and leaves the children behind because I cried at it in better than the movies yesterday. Like I was bawling my butt off at a teen rom-com. So for whatever reason, like the writing or whatever it was, I think also too, like the fact that she had a toxic relationship with her mother before, I just, it, yeah, I just remain a bit like disconnected from the book. So if you just don't connect, it's sort of like, okay, yeah, I, I guess you know, thanks for telling me your story, but it didn't really do anything for me. It's hard to like write autobiographies, it's like writing someone's life, but no, it's more about the writing. So like I said, for me, it needed to be edited. Yeah, the writing wasn't anything amazing. And because I didn't like the mother, um, I didn't really feel the emotional connection there. Like I understand how hard it is when you have like a trauma bond with a parent. I've been through that and I think because of that, because of my own complex relationship with my parents, I don't want to read about other people's like toxic mums and stuff. You know, I'm trying to like get space from that. Books are meant to be an escape, enjoyment for me. It's like I don't want to read other sh shitty parents. Okay, <laughs> like we've grown, we've evolved, we've moved on. Don't want to go back to the past and rehash it. So I think that's why I'm like, mm, yeah, it's not for me. I, I didn't really know what this was about. I just sort of heard that it was great and it was doing the rounds. You know, I just saw the title pop up a lot and a lot of people talking about how great the Korean food mentions in this were, which they were fantastic. I love that part. Um, I am probably going to go and order myself some Korean today. My mouth, like I need to eat it now. So that was great. But um, in regards to the rethon as a whole, I think I have three and a half hours left, but I am taking a break, bros, because <laughs> I haven't moved my body in two days. <laughs> I haven't done anything except read and feed myself and my cats, obviously. And yeah, I'm uh, I'm feeling the effects of that. So I'm going to take some break, indulge in some other hobbies that I have and do some other things. And I will get back to it this evening because like I said, I've only got three and a half hours left. So it's pretty easy to do. I might even just do that in bed, go to bed real early, like get into bed at 7 p.m. and knock it out then. Yeah, I've read an amazing amount of books. So my TBR has been slashed, which was one of my New Year's goals. So... Yay for me in that regard. Hello, hey Sylvie, beautiful girl. So I just decided that because I had around four hours left that I could finish the Waking Romeo audiobook and I decided to do that instead while I potted about the house and finished off some housework and did some other things so that's what I decided please don't knock it over boo thank you um so Waking Romeo is like a future dystopian remake of Romeo and Juliet so the characters actually have the same names but it's a spin it doesn't really follow Romeo and Juliet that closely whatsoever which is great because i actually am not a fan of romeo and juliet i think it's hella toxic and gross but that being said did i like the spin on this one not really it's very it's a time jump novel and time travel novel and with those 
there are very few I enjoy because most of them I find hella confusing and it just gives me a headache <laughs> and this was one of those ones where I'm just like wait what's happening and it went for so long it went for way too long it just kept going kept going they're like oh but then this happened and layers here and layers there and this was all along and I'm just like okay this was a bit too much for me <laughs> personally so I've given it three stars like it's not terrible it's just yeah it was too much it was too long too much stuff was happening and I was starting to get confused and lose like the thread of what was going on. That brings me to the end of my 24 hour readathon. So I will let you know. I read 16 books, but I only finished 13 of those. Three of them were DNFs, even though one of the DNFs I did get over halfway. I'm just not counting them um, in terms of how books I read. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to count them. So let's just say I read. 13 books in the 24 hours. I decided to do some a mathematics. So in the 13 books that I actually fully read, hey beautiful girl, um, that was almost 4,000 pages. So I was reading just over 160 pages an hour. In terms of words, it was over a million words read. And I actually thought I'd try and figure out how many words per minute that I can read because I haven't really done that for a long time. Um, and I was speed reading these. I wasn't really taking my time, so I was like going through them. Um, so it's about, in this challenge, it was about 700 words per minute. But then I did some little, you can do like a little timer testy one. So I, I wanted to see how many I read when I'm like taking my time and it's just over 500. So it's good to see like, okay, I sort of, you know, can read up to 700 words per minute, but I generally, when I'm sitting at home reading my books, tend to read about 500 words per minute with fiction. With nonfiction, I'm sure it's slower than that. But um, yeah, that was interesting to find out how many words per minute I can read. It was great. So I, I got a five star book was the highest rating with her Wiccan Marquess. And I'm definitely going to be reading some of uh, that author's uh, backlog. I've already got one lined up for the next book I read because I need. once I decide to start reading again, I need to read something that I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy just so I just don't get, you know, into a book slump from having read too much. The worst book I read, How to Kill Your Family, something of that vein, and I gave it less than two stars. I think I gave it one and a half because I just freaking hated it. It was just gross. I'm like, I don't want to read about psychopaths just killing willy-nilly that I don't like. Like, there was nothing I really liked about that novel whatsoever. So that was the worst book I read. I read quite a mix of nonfiction and fiction. And in fiction, I read fantasy. I read romance. I read um, contemporary. I read thrillers. I read um, dystopian and YA, so I read a decent mix of genres and in the fiction that included like poetry, included the topics of sex, it included memoirs, so I think that was like what got me through the 24 hours was by just keeping it like varied and fresh. I do not think I could have read 24 hours just of like fantasy, even though it's my favourite genre. Mm -mm, it's too much. The downside of this is that you don't get to like sit and think about the books that were fantastic. Like when you read a five star read, you sort of want to bask in that glow for a bit. You don't want to just be like on to the next thing. I'm sorry if I just realized now that my glasses are probably giving a horrible glow, but what can I do? And the positives is that you just burn through books. Like you just go through them and you really clear out your TBR. So that was amazing. Um, I read like a staggering amount of books, obviously for this week now <laughs> with 13, read in 24 hours worth of reading so yeah in two and a half days i i fully read 13 books but um yeah i'm looking forward to having a break this was fun to do and interesting <laughs> and um i haven't lost my love of reading i just need to take a few days off and i'll be right as rain but um that is everything for my 24 hour readathon i hope you guys are having a beautiful morning afternoon or evening and as always stay wild star child